السلام عليكم Uh, thank you for invitation, uh, GIS. Thank you for was, and uh, thank you for the audience to stay until this time. Uh, I will take you quickly through the uh, an, uh, the ASD, uh, how to do uh, and how to evaluate a complex ASD. I will make my talk based on examples, and at the end, if there is any question or any the things, we'll discuss it. So this is a classic picture. Uh, table from any article you read about ASD, that is the TE or the trans uh, thoracic checklist uh, for um, for uh, doing a secundum ASD. Confirm the defect uh, that is secundum and rule out other type, size, location, and number. Measure the rims less than five. In most of the cases, preclude device uh, closure. Uh, how the symptom it look like? Is it aneurysmal, anustation, or carry? Uh, net, uh, network may interfere with the, advice, uh, with the device placement. Demonstration that all the pulmonary veins going to the LA. Uh, assess the tricuspid valve, the mitral valve, and uh, careful assessment of the uh, cardiac chamber and function. Assessment other congenital heart disease. Exclude intracardiac thrombus. The thing which is not mentioned here in this pulmonary artery pressure. Very important and crucial. So this is... Uh, I want you to take a picture of this for the people who want to do ASD. This is a very important slide by Zahid Amin. Um, he's a well-known. I did my training with him in Chicago. Uh, he divided the septum into uh, the following. So this is the AV rim. That's the one you see uh, in apical four chamber. This is the aortic rim. I will skip this. This is the SVC rim. And this is the posterior rim. And this is the IVC rim. The three standard view in ASD closure is the uh, TE at the, low, uh, at the short axis at the aortic uh, level, which is at the 45. Usually you see the aortic rim, and you see the inferior part of the posterior septum. This two, septa, uh, this two rims is the least important for ASD closure. The rest is mandatory to you have it, and you have to have at least five millimeter of each of the, uh, the rest. So this is in 45 degree, you can see this two rim. Then in the zero degree, uh, or uh, the extreme, which is 120, 130, you're going to see the AV rim, and you're going to see the uh, mid or the posterior, uh, the mid or superior part of the posterior rim. And then this is the bicable view. You see the SVC and the IVC. The superior rim, you don't see it in transthoracic, and uh, you cannot see it by standard transesophageal echo. You need a 3D to see the superior rim, or you use intracardiac echo. So this rim, I want you to remember it, and for the fellow, the superior rim and the aortic rim is the site of the erosion because the roof of the atrium is not supported by any tissue. Here is supported, here is supported, here is supported, here is supported, but this part usually is free, and this is the site of the erosion. So this is the uh, IBC. Uh, 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 you, so that's a, a, the short axis view at 50. You see this is the aorta. This is the aortic rim deficient here. This is the posterior inferior. And here at zero, you see the AV uh, rim. And this is the posterior uh, middle or superior. It's here or there. And this is the bicable. So I will, I will give you an example of simple ASD quickly. This is a 23-year year uh, old lady. I said 23, not 25, because the paper we know from Mayo Clinic, any patient above 25 presented with ASD mortality, even if you close surgically or percutaneous, they are less than the uh, similar um, male or female at, at, the, at the same age uh, without uh, ASD. So uh, 15 by 12, middle ASD, uh, good rim, uh, RV dilatation, good function, no LV dysfunction, which is fine, ASD closure with 19, so that's how it look like. So this is at the zero degree, you see this is the AV rim, this is the posterior rim, and this is at the aortic level, this is aortic rim, this is uh, the, the inferoposterior, this is by cable, and this is the device sandwiching uh, all the septum. Okay, this is my talk, it is about Complex ASD. Complex is not only anatomical consideration. It's three things. Anatomical or associated congenital structure and make your life difficult to make decision to close or no. And physiological. So anatomical, large defect by definition, 25 millimeter. Some people say 30, some people say 36, some people they say 37. 
multiple defect, partially deficient rim, eccentric, too close to the AV valve or to the IVC or SVC. Because if you are too close uh, to the AV valve, your, your device will cause mitral or tricuspid regurg. If it's too close to the IVC or SVC, it will cause obstruction. Then oval, oval mean one axis is uh, two to two five uh, larger than the other, or slit like when two five to three times uh, the axis uh, comparing to the other. Aneurysmal septum or dynamic changes. Then associated congenital heart disease or ischemic heart disease, MR, arrhythmia, it make uh, uh, the decision is difficult. I will show you cases. When you have high LVEDB, high RVEDB, high pulmonary pressure, again, it will make your life difficult. So large defect. Let's go talk to the money. With, uh, to, uh, focus on the large defect. Large defects is closable, provided you have sufficient rim. The important rims is the IVC. The most important is the IVC, SVC, AV, and superior rim. As I told you, the superior rim, you will see it with the uh, 3D. Shape of the defect, round versus oval versus slit. Because we'll show you why slit is uh, riskier than round. Localization, middle, or eccentric, and I, we told you why. If it's in the middle, it's good. If it's eccentric, it can impinge uh, any of the uh, uh, valves or uh, veins around. So that is the classic 3D of a large defect. This is the AV rim here. The superior rim is deficient. SVC, posterior rim, IVC rim and the AV uh, rim here. So this is a nice round, it's closable. Pro uh, probably you need some technique to close it. When you see uh, while Geshgari or Fadi Sawai, he put a case with a large defect, usually we show you this. In fact, uh, this is a slit like. We show you the bad part of the defect, which is the largest from here to here. This is anterior, this is uh, the, this aortic rim, this is the posterior inferior rim. Actually, if you look at 3D, it's closable. I take the, uh, the largest diameter here is 44. It looks ugly, but the other rim is fine. So this kind is, is, is easy to close. And this is uh, uh, how we close it. Uh, this is a large defect of 30 millimeter. You can see this is SVC rim here. And this is IBC rim is flimsy. Uh, this is a short axis, it's a flimsy. In such patient, I advise the people who do the, the, the device, uh, you know, like uh, with no a lot of uh, volume or experience to use balloon sizing. Uh, this is the, uh, the, show, the, at the level of the, like at zero level, you see it's the, the posterior rim is uh, deficient and a good AV rim. And here uh, we uh, show it to you, it's an oval shape. And then here we, we close it with uh, a 34 device, a good sandwich. This is a common flow because of heparin. This is a bicable, and this is a bicable. You see, it's nice away from everything, causing no problems. Okay, how we deal with a partially deficient rim? Uh, all the rims, it have to be there. IBC, SVC, superior AV, except the uh, vortic rim and the posterior inferior. There is different technique to deal with that. Uh, Either you do clockwise uh, rotation uh, for the device because you are you will you will be afraid that it, when you deploy it in a regular way it will be flipped from the aortic rim because it's deficient. So you have to do different maneuvers, uh, you know, to avoid uh, that the disc go to the right atrium. So there is two things. Um, Two different maneuver, either using the same axis, but you do some, uh, uh, you know, clockwise, counterclockwise, or you put another uh, venous sheath and you open the lift atrial disc and you support the lift atrial by dilator or by catheter and prevent it from uh, prolapse to the right atrium until you open uh, the right atrial disc. So this is how we do uh, the, 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 the most common technique we use is this one. We do clockwise rotation for the, device, uh, the, the sheet. The sheet usually come like this, and it go here. But we do clockwise until it touch the roof. We open the left atrial disc, and we continue to open until uh, we unsheet everything. Then we release the device, and it will be closed. And this is how we do it. You do, so that's the, the usual one. Now I do clockwise, clockwise, clockwise. Sorry, it went back, so this clockwise. Then I pull, I continue to unsheath, I continue to unsheath, I continue to unsheath, and then that's it. So that is the clockwise. That's the most common technique. 
The other technique when you have deficient aortic rim is you deploy in the left upper pulmonary vein and then uh, like you keep one third of the device inside, open, open, open and sheath. Then after that you give it a little push, everything will uh, come together and you will have uh, the, uh, the, the device closed. The other technique is to use a house dwarf sheath. It's come eight, 10 and 12. It, you see the shape? It is like not the C shape of the regular um, AZ device. Here you can open it, uh, like here I give you an example. This is the septum. You just go ahead and uh, uh, introduce the sheath and you open the device. It's as if you are going to the roof. Multiple ASDs, uh, it's a, one of the complex uh, uh, ASDs. If there is a, a seven millimeter difference between the two defects, you can put two the device. Uh, the, uh, you know, you, you cross each one and then you start to deploy, size each one separately, start to deploy the small one, then deploy the larger one, so the larger one will sandwich the small one. So this is an example here, uh, two defect, one anterior, one in the middle, a lot of flow. Uh, so you cross the first, sorry. So you cross the first defect, then you inflate balloon for sizing and keep the balloon inflated. Then you cross while the balloon inflated, you make sure that you go to the other defect. We cross the other. Now you have two wire in two different uh, uh, defect. Uh, this is the, the sheath in one and the other sheath in one. Now here I released one, then I'm releasing the other one. and. This is how it looked like from the lateral view. Nice sandwiching. Another case. So that's the final result. Very nice uh, uh, sandwiching. And here in the bicable sandwiching the other, and this is the 3D. This is another case we did uh, outside the country. And this is the difference of seven millimeter here, two large defect. And this is how the small and the large, the large is done, do sandwiching, release everyone with a good result. That's the T as you see here. Uh, sandwiching each other. If they, there is too many holes, like fenestration, tiny, three, four millimeter, what you do, use the multifenestrated ASD device. This lady with uh, uh, multifenestrated ASD with flabby symptom and LTGA. Uh, I will not go in detail because of time, LTGA. Uh, this people, they need a really a very good hemodynamic study. So this is, uh, we crossed in the middle one, and then we use multifenestrated device, and this is the device after release, and as you can see, well seated, no any flow, and excellent uh, uh, positioning. This is the LV before, you see the D shape, and now it is after, very nice, this D shape, and patient doing very well. Uh, this is my last case, uh, a case of an ASD, uh, in elder patient with ischemic cardiomyopathy. So this patient in 2018, he had uh, MI in outside hospital. He thrombolized, then he transferred to another center for coronary angiogram. They found the LED, there is a proximal lesion, but there is a TM3 flow, and they found uh, uh, LCX and RCA lesion. He had a bypass lima to the LED, uh, to OM and RCA. Unfortunately, the LED was a late presentation, and the lima was, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, to LED was like uh, almost non-function because there is a scar in the uh, distal LED and achinasia of the lateral uh, 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 ventricle, lateral wall. RV looked fine, not bad, and he had a mitral ring. So this, he came to us with right-sided heart failure, ascites. In fact, in ultrasound, the bowel was floating inside his uh, uh, ascites, and he was very sick and uh, congested liver, child one cirrhosis, and uh, patient won't help. They did not uh, notice that there was an ASD during the, the, the surgery he had, so this is his angiogram on arrival. Unfortunately, everything is occluded. Even the distal, uh, the, the graft to the RCA is occluded. Distal, uh, no distal target and uh, uh, severe disease. The OM is also screwed up, and the lima is non-functioning because it's scar. So how you evaluate this patient? We have two problems. Uh, you have the ring, you want to make sure that the ring uh, is uh, not small, 
and you have to make sure that the BDB is. You see here, the ASD is not too big. It's about one centimeter, but a lot of, uh, of, of, of shunting. It was three to one. So why is shunting? Is it only the LBEDB or, or uh, the mitral ring, that it's a small or, uh, 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 you know, like tight leading to this three to one shunting? So this is the mitral valve. It's a nice flow, but some of the flow could We need 30 seconds only. Yeah, so we took him to the cath lab, we did the witch, it was 30, and then, uh, and we did a pullback from the LV through the ring to the RA, it was 30, uh, there was no gradient, and we did the LA pressure was 30, and LVDB was 30 millimeter mercury. So most of the problem from the sick uh, LV. So uh, nothing to do with the ring, and you know what, we medicate the patient for six months with interest too, and, um, uh, and uh, there was no doubt at that time in 2018, and uh, maximize everything, we brought him back, his LVDB, the day of the procedure was uh, 12. So what we did, we, uh, d uh, we did a fenestration in the device, as you can see here, that's a fenestration, and we kept the device, we did not release it for 30 minutes, LVDB was not uh, elevated, so we released the device. Now we are in 2002, I saw the patient last Wednesday doing great, and uh, thank you very much. So this is a couple of papers, one by Zahid Amin and, uh, and one by our group. This is a very comprehensive, it's about 28 pages uh, for the people who are interested to read. Go ahead. Thank you.